Hi, Estelle here, back with some Logic Tips and Tricks, number two. Um, I've had a lot of people asking me about Touch OSC, and now it's on the iPad. I thought I'd give you a step-by-step -step introduction as to how to get it synced up and working seamlessly with Logic. Um, so, you've got the iPad 2 and Logic 9. I'm going to show you Touch OSC now. Um, one of the things that I think really, really helps is using Touch OSC on a computer to computer network and the iPad counts as a computer, so it has one because if you use it on the Wi-Fi you can get issues with latency so I'm going to go over to the computer first and just set that up okay if you go up to your network setting in the top right here and you go to create network you can see it's set up a network for me and you just literally press OK and just watch while the dial creates the network for you then what you need to do is go to your iPad and do the same. You go to settings, Wi-Fi, and it should recognize, there it is, my MacBook Pro. Excellent. So now we've got them set up, the computers are talking to one another. At this stage, we go into TouchOSC and we're going to um, see if TouchOSC can locate the host. Basically, the host is the computer that's going to be talking to. So let's go into Touch OSC now. Okay, if you press I in the top right corner, basically it takes you to this page and you can see we have connections and it's found the host. Just hit that select. And you can see I've got a screen come up, but the screen doesn't seem to have any of my relevant information from my Logic song. So I'm just gonna go into Logic Pro Preferences and I'm going to drag down to control surfaces because that's essentially what this is and we're going to go into setup so here's one I had earlier but I'm just going to delete this one <laughs> and start the process from fresh okay so if you now go into touch off just close it down and open it up again you should get there you go a dialogue window pops up on logic We've located a la, la, la touch off device. Do you want to add? Yes, we do. So now you can see we have our device. Select the device there and it will give you all the information, etc, etc. So let's just go back to our main page and go out of that window. And you can see now that I actually have the channel strips set up. We can see these um, little kind of steps here. These are the volume informations and these are in banks of eight because obviously most people have more than an eight track yes the benefits of modern technology so you can see you can move along here and just look at your overall mixer page and i'm going to go now into channel strip setting which gives me um you know the focus of one particular channel that i want to set you know set something up on or work on so you can see here at the moment i'm on bvs and if you just watch at the moment just both of them in tandem you can see that as i go up or down Ta da so does the computer. So I'm now just looking for a string track and I may as well move away from the computer because that's the benefit of using the iPad. Okay, so we're on strings chorus and I'm now just gonna hit play and you can see I'm quite far now from the computer. And I can stop and this is really useful as well for if you're recording vocals and you're a vocalist like I am who produces their own stuff and spends hours you know tangled into leads and blah, and you can you know set up your mic over here and without having to even go to the computer you can just hit stop play and you've just got a great control um, I'm also going to show you um, a way to move away from using the mouse often when we're when we're doing kind of our automation at the end of the mix you know you're using your mouse to do try and do something in time and it's really really difficult and very fiddly and basically we chose to be musicians so we didn't have to sit behind a desk so now let me show you how much fun you can have playing around with some of the effect parameters so let's press play um, you can see here in the slot that um, the channel strip settings that I'm using in the slot so the compressor is on because it's surrounded by these two lines as is the tape delay and I'm now going to add the exciter you can hear it coming on and to then play around with the effect you just select the little button next to it so you can see they now change to the tape delay here I am on You can do two at the same time.
Okay, so now I want to show you how you can actually put those into your mix without even going near your computer. Um, underneath your channel strip slot on your computer, you have a little slot here where it'll either say read or latch. And basically this is a function that allows you to record your automation without actually having to be in record in Logic. So we can see here we've got the latch button similarly in red, like our record button. So I'm just going to hit latch. And basically, when I press play now, anything I do on the effect parameters will be recorded into the mix under, um, if you press A, the automation will come up in yellow. So let's go. So now if we go back and just punch in read, which enables it to read the information we've just recorded, we can now play, and if you watch here, these effect parameters should tweak and move um, in the same manner that I just played. So I've just been using this so much more. I think now it's on the iPad, you've just got so many more ways to interact with it and really use it in your music to make it a more creative, kind of fun and interactive thing to do, you know, because who wants to sit behind a desk all day and, you know, it's good to walk around. You can even actually go up in the kitchen, but um, I won't do that. But it's amazing how far this network will extend. A um, few troubleshooting things I just want to talk about because I had a few issues with the ingoing and outgoing ports. So. Again, if you just go into I, which basically gives you all of the internal access to setting the thing up, um, if you go back to the connections where we went at the beginning, um, the outgoing and incoming ports, um, at default, they're set at 700, 7,000, sorry, and 9,000. Um, but I changed them to 7,000 and 8,000 and seemed to get a much better response. Um, that was just pure fluke or tech know-how, one of the two. So if you are having issues, do try just setting um, different ports because you might have interference or something from another bit of equipment or something that's hindering um, the ability for your iPad to communicate. Anyway, any issues, feel free to mail me, speak to me, and if I can help you, I will. But enjoy. Bye.